I wanted to spend a few minutes explaining each of the parts of our observation assignment. This video will detail the expectations and guidelines for the first paper, which is all about environments. You can see in front of you that I have the assignment guidelines called up that are located in your course syllabus. For this assignment, you will need to access the observation videos link on Blackboard. Let's go ahead and find that link on the left here and click into it. Once you click into this link, you will click into this folder here. Now that you're inside this link, you see three different categories of information. Each of these categories will be used for a separate part of your observation assignment. For the environments paper, you will access the first resource, the PowerPoint presentation of the lab school at Harper College. I'll go ahead and click into the PowerPoint and show you just a little bit of the content. You can see that there are individual pictures highlighting the various parts of the environment. You will use this information to answer and reflect on the bulleted questions on the assignment guidelines. Let's look at those bulleted questions now. The first question asks you to define the interest centers and any other areas in the classroom. This should be very easy to do since the PowerPoint presentation already has that information listed for you. The second question asks you to provide details on signage, labeling, and organizational strategies that are used within the environment to help children navigate, navigate through the classroom independently. This will be an area where you will need to investigate the slides closely and pay attention to the signage in the room, how things are labeled, as well as how things are organized. You then need to discuss how this helps the children navigate the classroom independently. What significance do the signs, the organization of the classroom, and the labeled materials have? The next question asks you to reflect on the characteristics of the learning environment that support or inhibit collaboration, creativity, and exploration. Now, since this is the lab school at Harper, I'm pretty confident that you will be reflecting on the support aspect instead of the inhibit. To reflect on this accurately, I want you to see, I want to see you apply aspects of the classroom that do support collaboration, creativity, and exploration. Look at the spaces in the classroom. Look at the materials in the classroom. Look at how the children can interact and work in the classroom. Imagine the classroom full of children interacting in and with the environment. Now reflect on how the environment supports collaboration, creativity, and exploration. Please be sure to reflect on all three of those ideas. The fourth question asks you to reflect on ways in which the physical environment reflects cultural responsiveness. What does this mean? It means does the environment reflect the diversity of the children in the classroom and materials provided? Again, imagine this classroom full of children and the diversity that population might include. Now look at the materials. Look at the pictures hanging on the walls or displayed on the shelves. Look at the dolls in the house area. Do you see items that reflect the diversity of the children in the classroom? The final question asks you to discuss how the environment supports the children's overall development. So look again at all of the materials in the classroom and discuss how these materials would support the children in the various areas of development. How does the environment and materials support social emotional development? How does the materials and environment support their cognitive development? And how does the environment and material support their physical development, both fine and gross motor? When organizing your paper, please separate each of the bulleted questions into separate paragraphs and follow the outline provided to ensure that you reflect on all necessary content from the assignment. College level writing is expected, so please pay attention to your spelling, grammar, overall organization, and sentence structure. Be sure to cite any research that was referenced in your paper using APA or MLA format, whichever you feel most comfortable using. 
Your paper should be approximately three to five pages in length and should be double spaced using 12 point font. Following the outlined format will ensure that you have covered all required components on the grading rubric. And you can reference the grading rubric for this assignment here. Should you have any questions regarding this assignment, please don't hesitate to reach out. Good luck!